Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is August 3rd, 2016. This is Christopher Aaron. We are going to look at gold and silver. Gold is on the verge of a breakout that I think is going to be critically significant for this market, basically going forward. So we're watching this play out in real time right now. We all know the fundamental factors that are impacting this market. The Federal Reserve last week kept interest rates at the lowest they have ever been in multiple generations. So they are continuously printing money. Deutsche Bank is close to filing something that is going to show what is brewing on their books, causing this bank to ask for bailouts and 175 billion in euros. There's a lot going on to account for this, but if you are new to these videos or to the precious metals markets, what I want to tell you is what I focus on here is the technical analysis of the markets. That is showing the actual trends that are developing in real time, as opposed to just discussing the news that is impacting the metals. So like I said, gold is on the verge of this breakout and I will show you what I mean by that. We hinted of that a couple of weeks ago. And I did want to say thank you for everyone who wrote. Uh, I was unable to record a video last weekend because I was engaged in some prior commitments, but I am back this week. So thank you for checking in those people who did. And let's get right to looking at gold, silver, and we will also look a little bit at the mining sector this week too for those who are interested in that. So looking at the metals here, we will start with gold. There's not a whole lot that you can tell from looking at this three-day chart here. We're looking at Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. There's not a whole lot that you can say from looking at the three-day chart. That's why we will look at the longer-term charts. Same for silver. Basically, after a strong day yesterday, giving back some of those gains today, but silver is at a very important level right now that I'm watching closely on the charts. And to put this in perspective here, this is the critical thing to understand about where gold is right now. There is a long-term downtrend that is being tested right now for the second time uh, over just the last month or two. And this would actually represent the fourth hit on this line if we go back. So we are referring to this magenta color downtrend here. This extends all the way from the all-time high at 19.23 per ounce back in 2011. We can see that this line was hit here again in 2012, about a year and some odd months later. And then the gold market basically fell very precipitously after that and then began to base and we were all watching this together as the gold market broke out of this gentle last downtrend that it was in. Now, that said, this line that had sort of been forgotten over the last number of years because gold had fallen so far is once again being tested. And as you can see, there is no, there is no other set of downtrend lines that can be drawn from the all-time high. So what this means is this is a final downtrend that is being tested. Now we have a number of other indicators, um, another series in technical analysis that we can use to give us leading indicators. As it stands right now, from this chart alone, we cannot say that gold has yet broken out of this downtrend. When we look at some of the other leading indicators, such as from the mining sector, some of the ratios, gold versus the commodity index, and we can see that something is happening here that's a little bit special with gold. This is not just a commodity-related phenomenon now. So we will look at that, and that's giving me a hint that this is getting ready to break out of this long-term downtrend. And mind you, there are thousands and thousands of eyeballs watching this level right now for a technical indicator waiting to say, okay, now it's safe to get back into this market. So when this line breaks, I do not think it's going to just be a little 10 or $20 break. I think you're going to see quite a spike higher 
after the break of this downtrend before something of a retest and then an acceleration away from this level. Zooming this in so we can see it even more closely. So a lot of the people, you know, I started producing these videos uh, back last August. We were in this low and we kind of were alerting people that the final low looked like it was forming. We didn't know if it was happening in here. Sure enough, it took one more drop lower after that. A lot of people started tuning into this form of analysis here in the lows and on this first rise. So mind you, we've seen this back and forth underneath the initial support zone here, which then broke out the day of the Brexit vote, came back, thus solidifying this resistance now as support between 1285 and 1305. And then after the price spiked up to 1378, it then came back just a week ago and bounced off 1310 again. So this green support zone here is looking increasingly valid. And here we can see the one, two attempts that gold has made thus far at breaking from this long-term downtrend. I believe the next attempt is going to prove successful, whether it is tomorrow or whether it is next week or perhaps late August. I think the next attempt is going to prove successful and we're going to see a significant rise up to perhaps the upper region of this blue parallel primary channel that we are in now. And from there, we'll reevaluate. So gold is setting up well here, temporary consolidations aside. Now, here's one of those leading indicators that I was referring to. This is what's giving me, for example, a signal. So there are a number of people here who have expressed interest in the mining sector. This is one of my uh, topics of focus for my premium service that I do have available. We get into the individual stocks for people that are looking to make investments in that sector. But even if you're not doing that, you can use this indicator to give you a sense of what is coming for gold here. So all we've done is drawn one on top of the other gold on the top and the gold miners on the bottom. This is the GDX fund, which owns too many miners, in my opinion. It owns almost 50 now. So it's very difficult to select real excellent companies when you're buying 50 at a time. But regardless, it gives us a good sense of the average for the entire sector. So notice, what have I done here? All I've done is drawn a line from where this gold mining ETF finds itself right now just above this 30 level and we've drawn this green line all the way back and where does this last hit the 30 level is right here in mid 2013. So the question is what was the gold price in mid 2013? We go straight up from that the red band and then looking over here on the y-axis and we can see the gold price was between 1410 and 1440. The last time the gold miners were at this level. So this is one of these indicators that's telling me that gold is getting ready to break through this long-term downtrend that we saw in the last slide. Now, if you are interested in investing in the gold miners, this is what I specialize in. And I am really glad and I'm really thankful that the people who were watching some of these videos trusted me and said, you know what, it's worth giving this a shot because the people who were following that have made nothing less than a small fortune in the last five months alone. We have the gold miners from these lows from 12 to 30 is 160% in five months. This is amidst a 30% rise in the price of gold. And mind you, I say this as someone who just bought some more gold. So I do accumulate the physical metals. I think there are really incredible gains to be made over the long run, both in the physical, but we are at a period of time right now where these mining companies are, I mean, 
hedge funds would be happy to have a 20% return in a year. And we have three now going on four companies that are up over 100% in the last four months. We weren't buying even in here in the lows. We were buying on the first consolidation out of the lows, February and into March. And we have three now going on four companies that are up over 100% in a few months. So why am I saying this? Because I know there are a lot of people who watch these types of videos who in the past have followed analysts who maybe said, well, the whole system is going to collapse, the world's going to end, and therefore you have to have all your metal in physical buried in the backyard or in a safe. Now, could this happen? Sure. And that's why I own some physical metal myself. However, for example, in the 1970s, gold rose 2,400%. And the world never ended. So it is quite possible for gold to rise a thousand percent from here without the world coming to an end. And if that happens, these companies are going to go up a multiple fold of what we've already seen so far. And why am I saying this? It's because people have already made fortunes in the last five months, but I am convinced that there is even more coming for this sector. What is my data point for that? This is for anyone that is new. We are looking at the XAU, which is another index of the top gold mining companies, about 15 or 20 of the largest gold mining companies. And we're looking at the ratio of the XAU to the S&P 500. This is the entire US stock market, the 500 largest companies. The current valuation for this ratio is 0 0.052. The last time that the precious metals peaked in 1980, with gold at 850 and silver at 50, this ratio hit 1 to 1. It doesn't quite show that data point because this only goes back to 1984. But if you use the analogs and you draw this back four more years, you will see that this ratio hits one to one. From 0 0.05 to one is a 2000% increase in the valuation of the mining companies for this ratio to get back with the rest of the stock market to where it was several decades ago. Now, of course, this could happen by the stock market, for example, crashing by 50, 60%, and maybe these mining companies only go up 1,000% or 800%. But I am a betting man, and being that, I look at data. I don't like to bet or invest blindly. And all the data that I see is showing me that this move is just warming up. Now, why am I producing these videos? Obviously, I do this for a living, but I do something for a living that has made people significant sums of money, and I want more people to have the possibility to do some really incredible things with their lives, to help themselves, and to help other people into the future. If I didn't believe in this, I wouldn't be doing this. Looking at silver. The situation is largely unchanged from two weeks ago. We had this nice long bottoming period here in silver between 2014 and mid 2016, under 1850 an ounce. And this breakout here looks really nice that we saw back in June. And we've since been consolidating above this breakout. There is minor support here at $19.25. And we can see this consolidation right now getting toward the upper extremes of the consolidation. Now, if gold is going to break that long-term downtrend that we looked at, and if the miners are already leading the price of the metal, I am willing to wager that silver is going to be advancing from this level. I have some targets for silver 
between $21.50 and $23 for the remaining part of this upcoming move. Does that mean it's going to start tomorrow? No, not absolutely. It could. But I think this is coming fairly soon. The executive summary. Gold still a support zone 1285 to 1306, 1305. The resistance is that long-term magenta color downtrend line being tested right as we speak. A break above 1380, let's round it to 1400 to be safe, is going to confirm the break of this line. And silver, the minor support, as we mentioned, the major support is still significantly lower. The resistance and the next target that we're looking at in that range. Now... Here's the final caveat that I didn't mention before. Silver in the later stages of a initial surge, and by that I mean the initial surge off the bottom, which this is. In the late stages of these surges, silver tends to overshoot the technical targets that one might look at. So I would not be surprised if silver overshoots this target over the next couple of months. And from there, we will have to start looking at the possibility of a somewhat significant correction that will have to unfold at some point. No market moves in a straight line and silver is going to be no different. So it looks to me though, like the first move at this point, I've had to modify what I was thinking a couple weeks ago. And that's what I do when the data that is presented to me changes. I don't think we ever have to stick to one dogmatic approach and say, this is how it's going to be if we have new data. So it looks to me like silver is going to be moving higher first and then we might have to get ready for that correction and I will do my best to help people navigate that correction as best as possible we can consider perhaps into the fall or this might even be next spring we can consider um, making some trades we can consider buying some insurance on silver buying put options for example can act as an insurance policy. But this is all stuff to talk about way down the road, a few months from now. For now, let's look for gold to break this level. This is going to be very significant. I think there's going to be a lot of mainstream attention coming into the precious metals market when gold breaks that region and finally surpasses 1400. Thank you very much for being with me. We will have another video next weekend. Excuse me, next week, this time on Wednesday. Have a nice rest of the week, and I will see you then.